We get up in the morning, we step on the scale, we look at our weight. Sometimes we even step on fancy devices that measure our body fat. And we look at all these metrics. And we get frustrated because the results are slow and because we're not getting like the quick, immediate visual feedback that we need. It's, it's slow to measure where our weight is going and there's nothing that's really giving us that whole like wide spectrum view on our lifestyle changes and our weight loss that we want. Glucose is the thing that you should be looking at, okay? Now, as someone that has talked about lower carb protocols for a long time, I think it's even more important than measuring ketones. I think it's more important than stepping on the scale every day. I think looking at your glucose can tell you so many things about how you respond to specific foods, how your body responds to stress, how your body responds to exercise, and that can pave the way for your bio-individual personalized approach that you take for a lifestyle. There's things that we need. We need data, okay? Lots of data to understand ourselves. We need a visual representation so we can remain motivated. We need to see a change. That's why we get blood tests done. That's why we do these things, right? But then we also need to understand that bioindividuality. Okay, let me explain the importance of that with some studies, and then we'll get into sort of the biochemistry of how the glucose and insulin relationship could actually help you burn more fat if you use it right. So there's a study that was published in the journal Diabetes Care that found when people actually tested their glucose, even with a finger prick test multiple times per day, it led to significant improvements in their overall diabetes outcomes, but it also led to much better food choices. Not a huge surprise, but the reason behind this is pretty simple. It's kind of the method to my channel too. It's with education comes adherence. People watch my channel because they wanna learn, and when they learn, they feel like they adhere better. It's plain and simple. But when you learn how you respond to a food, then you adhere better. Maybe you don't eat that food or you do eat that food. Okay, now there was another study that looked at monitoring this via a continuous glucose monitor. Okay, I wear one. Okay, I'm not saying everyone needs to go out and get one, but it's pretty cool. Okay, so this study, when they were wearing a continuous glucose monitor, 800 people, okay, they had them eat different foods. They found that some people had a pretty big glucose and insulin response to a simple banana. Some people had none, okay, same banana, same batch of bananas, right? Okay, but then when you looked at cookies, it was the same kind of thing. It was like, I could eat a cookie and not have this crazy glucose response. But Bob, sitting next to me, could have a cookie and have a big ol' spike, and a big ol' spike in insulin, and then a big ol' drop. Point is, huge bioindividuality. Now, I'll digress for just one second to say that the researchers concluded that more than likely it had to do with the microbiome with this. Okay, they found that when the microbiome was more diverse, there were more what are called short-chain fatty acids, which can help out with glucose signaling. They actually act as a signaling device that help with glucose utilization in the body, help the muscle take up glucose. This isn't a microbiome topic. My point in saying that is my microbiome is totally different than yours. We could be eating the same thing, but our lifestyle factors influence that. And that influences how we respond to foods. So when we monitor our glucose, we see how we respond in our dynamic, in our life. And that teaches us a ton. Now, why biochemically does this matter when it comes to fat loss? Well, let me explain something. Okay. When you consume food and you have carbohydrates, you have a spike in glucose, and then after that, you have a drop, okay? Well, a couple of things happen, and there was an interesting study. So this study was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, okay? And it gave subjects either a high glycemic food or a low glycemic food. And no surprise, the high glycemic food led to a 2.4x greater insulin curve, right? So there's more of a response. Not really surprised there. But what was interesting was when they looked under functional MRI scan, they saw the high glycemic food, same amount of carbohydrates, same amount of food, just high glycemic versus low glycemic. The high glycemic triggered much more activity in what's called the nucleus accumbens region of the brain. This is a region of the brain that is like the reward system. The brain got it treated it like it was a drug. It saw that and it, it reacted triggering sort of uh, almost a property that would make you want to go back to that because it lit that portion of the brain up so much. Not to mention, observationally, subjective hunger scores were significantly higher. Okay, again, high glycemic, triggering the brain to light up, you want to eat more. But let's talk fat loss for just a second, specifically at the cellular level. When you eat, okay, glucose goes up, typically, okay, and then it comes back down because of a response to insulin. In between our meals is where we burn fat. That's when we burn fat, okay? People get confused and they think every time they eat, they're revving up their metabolism. No, every time you eat, that's stopping fat loss. Not saying you shouldn't eat, but that stops the actual fat loss process. After the insulin levels come back down, blood sugar stabilizes or drops, 
Then glucagon, another hormone comes up. Glucagon then activates something called hormone-sensitive lipase. Basically, glucagon triggers a cascade of fat being broken down into individual fatty acids that can be burned for fuel. This cannot happen in the presence of insulin. So what this tells us is like, if we are monitoring our glucose via finger stick or maybe we're using a device, we can see when our glucose levels are stabilizing or getting lower and we can capitalize on that. Normally when you have a dip in glucose, you want to eat and you probably will eat left to your own devices. But if you can understand, oh no, I'm just having a dip right now. If I don't act on this, I can actually capitalize and possibly burn some fat or you can go for a walk and stabilize and utilize glucose and get everything to kind of regulate again and possibly burn some more fuel as a result. So left to our own devices, these glucose drops can be hugely detrimental. Okay, not saying you go out and purposely get a glucose drop, but when we can have a visual representation of it and see it and have data, we can do a lot more with it and allow ourselves to manipulate that insulin glucagon level a little bit more. Now, today's video is sponsored by a continuous glucose monitor company called Cygnos. Okay, they're a company I have been using for quite a while. Very cool organization. If you're interested in obtaining a continuous glucose monitor, you should definitely check out Cygnos. What they are is an organization that has made it possible for regular people to go and consult with a doctor, be able to have a quick teleconsult, and be able to get a continuous glucose monitor monitor for weight management or for a multitude of other reasons outside of just the usual continuous glucose monitor needs, right? Very, very cool. I've been using them for over a year. It's changed my game. I can see my exercise. I can see all these things. I monitor different foods that I eat. I know what potentially kicks me out of ketosis and what doesn't. It's just opened up my eyes. Okay, so it's a huge, huge thing. There is a link down below for you to check them out. You can go to Cygnos.com slash Thomas, Cygnos.com slash Thomas revolutionary, seriously taking the world by storm. Some really big news that just came out over the last couple of months with them if you just do a quick Google search. Anyway, that link is down below and a big thank you to Cygnos for allowing me to create awesome content surrounding this. And also, I have a lot more with this video, but if you have ideas for continuous glucose monitor content, put them in the comment section below. Like if you wanna see my response to given foods, I can do videos on, hey, here's what happens when I eat this. Here's what happens when I eat that. Could be really cool. What makes Cygnos super unique is that it's not just a continuous glucose monitor, it's not just access to that. It has an entire system to help you track your food, see how you respond to food, know when to exercise, know when your glucose is spiking, and it helps coach you through. And then it's algorithmically driven, so it learns as you go. So you start to learn how you respond to given foods and how you respond to given exercise. It's kind of like having a blood glucose coach. It's not just monitoring your glucose. So the entire Cygnos app makes that entirely possible, which is really what makes this so unique. It's not just a regular continuous glucose monitor. Cygnos is in this for the long haul, so it's not about just getting a quick snapshot in time. It's about taking that snapshot and then doing something with it and helping people truly change their lifestyle. It's seriously one of the most awesome things I've ever seen. So that link's down below, comment down below too. Let's talk about those glucose dips for just a second again. Okay, there's a study published in the journal Nature Metabolism, took a look at 1,070 people. Okay, they gave them over 8,000 standardized meals. Okay, and over 71,000 ad libitum meals they tracked. Okay, that means 71,000 meals that were just, they could eat whatever they wanted to. Okay, they found some interesting things when they looked at their glucose. The greater the glucose drop, the more that they ate over the next 24 hours. So even after one meal, if they had a big glucose drop that was directly correlated with eating more over the next 24 hours, one bad meal essentially that can drop your glucose and have this big spike and crash can lead to you eating more. Now, there's a lot of reasons behind that, obviously, when we talk about the brain and everything like that, but let's look at another study that was published in the Annals of Nutrition and Metabolism. Okay, this looked at a similar thing. They looked at a higher fiber cereal versus cornflakes. Okay, in this case, the cornflakes spiked the glucose much higher and had a sharper crash, right? They also found that with the cornflakes, leptin was three times lower. Leptin is the signaling hormone, okay? It is the signaling hormone that communicates with the brain to say, burn fat. If leptin is higher, then the brain revs up the metabolism. So when leptin was low like this, it made, basically made it so the satiety hormone wasn't as functional, leading to, of course, eating more. So yes, by having these drops, you can absolutely manipulate negatively how your body responds. 
But again, if you can control it and understand what's doing it, you can either mitigate the damage or avoid the situation altogether. The other thing we have to look at is not just about food. Sometimes we're under stress and we don't realize it. But when we're under stress, it's a natural response for our glucose to go up. Okay, cortisol, all these fight or flight responses trigger the release of glucose. They trigger the liver to produce more glucose via gluconeogenesis. So our, our glucose goes up even without eating food. Okay, normally under a like natural circumstance, if we get stressed, we would go run or fight or something. We don't do that anymore because we get stressed and we just sit there and boil. That's not good because our glucose goes up with nowhere to go. This can of course lead to potential insulin resistance. It can lead to a multitude of negative things. But if we can, again, look at our glucose and be able to monitor this, think about what that can do, okay? Eating high carb foods in an already high glucose setting would not be the best thing to do. Maybe your impulse is to say, I'm gonna go eat X, Y, Z because I'm stressed. But if you can look and you can see, test your finger or use a CGM, you can see, oh wow, I'm already high. Maybe I need to exercise instead and utilize and burn this glucose so I remain in a better state. There was a study that was published in the journal Obesity that was a meta-analysis that found the direct correlation that psychosocial stress led to increased adiposity. When we are stressed out, we probably eat more. We also disrupt hormonal signaling that A, leads us to eat more, but B, can make us more insulin resistant, excuse me, so that when we do eat, maybe we have more of a problem. But the big thing here that I'm also interested in is as a former overweight person that was 100 pounds overweight before, exercise was always kind of a weird thing for me. But when you look at the data, you find you don't need as much exercise to control glucose as people think. But another thing, if we start an exercise regime, think about how frustrating it is, how long it takes to see a result on the scale, how long it takes to see improvements in triglycerides, how long it takes to see improvements here and there. But if you can see instant gratification, get the instant gratification, instant improvement by tracking glucose, it's telling you a lot more. That's why I'm, I stand behind the fact that I don't care if you use a CGM or not, I think that it makes it easier, but I think that tracking glucose becomes even more important than ketone measurement, all this because it's telling you the framework of so many different lifestyle factors, okay? There was a study that was published in Metabolic Syndrome and Obesity that demonstrated that 150 minutes of intermediate exercise compared to like, 40 minutes of pretty intense exercise and compared to even 20 minutes of very intense exercise all led to similar glucose modulation over the longer term, over the week. So it doesn't even take as much exercise as we think to control and to mitigate the damage, do some damage control on the glucose spikes. So instead of sending ourselves into colossal overtraining and causing more stress, we can actually see, oh, you know what? I actually only needed 30 minutes of good easy cardio to mitigate the damage and get myself back into a healthy state. And then guess what? Maybe you're not gonna overeat and maybe your actual weight loss will be achieved easier than if you did a hard workout, trigger yourself into a stress response and wanted to overeat by three cookies that adds up, right? Huge change by just looking at what is going on in our bodies. How we uptake glucose tells us everything. Our insulin sensitivity, it tells a model for, if you ask me, just the state of our health in a lot of ways, how we utilize fuels, how we burn them, how quickly we respond to them. That tells us our flexibility. That is so much more than stepping on the scale. As someone that has been in the fitness industry, I will tell you that there are, I could probably literally say dozens of people that I know that step on a scale or look at their body fat and they're shredded and they look amazing. But how they respond to fuels and their overall level of health is in the toilet. It's not about that anymore. It's about how you feel, how you respond, how you look as somewhat of an afterthought, but knowing your data and your bio-individuality. I'll see you tomorrow.